You staying home tonight? I hadn't planned on it, no. Plan on it. We're here. We're live. Sorry for this late episode. Something's wrong with this. I don't know why it sounds like that. Oh, yeah. What's up, everybody? I have to apologize. This is a late Thanksgiving episode. Um, very late Thanksgiving episode. How was your Thanksgiving? Are you thankful? I just wanted to record a quick episode, just a solo episode. We have a few voicemails today. I have some uh, shout outs and some updates about the podcast. Um, you know, we've had 34 episodes, I think. I think this is the 35th. And, um, yeah, just have some shout outs, some thank yous. I have some uh, updates on a little bit of more of the direction that we're going with the podcast. And th- we have like four or five voicemails to listen to real quick. We're going to throw in some voicemails. If you're watching right now on Instagram Live, you can still call in before I get these voicemails done. 817-527-1423. And uh, we'll throw in that, throw in that uh, voicemail. That was Apache Tomcat, When I'm Gone, the <clears throat> theme song for the show, uh, which starts with this really interesting little sound bite there that I really I think just fits so well with the show for some reason. Uh, so anyways, we had a good Thanksgiving. I turned 30, actually, since the last time you've probably listened to an episode, I turned 30. It wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Um, But everyone in my life, my wife is over here uh, organizing all of our homeschool stuff and organizing. No, it's fine. It's organizing uh, all of our, you know, Montessori and homeschool things in our huge warehouse Ikea shelves things. Um, So what was I saying? What was I talking about? Oh, it turned 30. And I don't know if it's because of the weird diet. I had this very drastic diet change. I don't know if you can tell. I've lost a lot of weight, and I'm looking more attractive than usual. And uh, my hair is falling out. I'm going bald. And everyone in my life is in denial of this fact. You've heard of the emperor has no clothes. Well, this is the opposite. This is the emperor has clothes. And all of the villagers are naked. This is the emperor uh, doesn't know that he's the emperor of a nudist colony. And they don't know that they're nude. And and the emperor is the only one who's like, y'all are in denial. You're, na- you're naked. This isn't, this isn't the Garden of Eden. This isn't Daytona during spring break. All right? This isn't a weird uh, Russian bathhouse. This, this is my life. I don't know if you can see this here, but I am going bald. I'm going bald. And look, I'm not going to be that guy that runs off into his 40s and 50s pretending he's not going bald. I'm going to call it out. I'm go- You're going to know about it. You're going to know I'm, I'm going to go bald so loudly it will be the head heard around the world that's how loudly i'm gonna go bald anyways i told myself i was just gonna danielle i told myself like okay you didn't record an episode for this monday so just record a real quick five minute one and i knew as soon as i turned this on that wasn't gonna happen anyways Real quick, some shout outs. Looking back, it's been really fun. 34 episodes, really interesting. Um, it, you know, it started out as, Hey, let's just do this because I think it's fun. Like there's no, there's no real plan other than continuing to do it. (coughs) 
And uh, I wanted to thank some people along the way as we've been figuring this out. So, like just huge fans of the show and supporters and people who have encouraged me personally, either on um, social media or on Facebook or well, social media or in person. Uh, Dr. Steve Bush is a patron of the show. And just every time I see him, you know, says something kind about the show and listens to it regularly. Uh, Ian Riley, who's also a patron and a huge supporter of the show. Tim Glemkowski. Uh oh man, I'm I'm leaving some names out here. Let's go over here real quick. Um also Gerald Gerald, I'm gonna mess up his last name. Guli, Gu, Giuliano. Uh Gerald, man, you're always just really supportive of the show. Just wanted to say thank you to everyone that listens. Um You know, we're only the second most popular podcast in the world. <clears throat> That's not true. Uh, but yeah, just thank you to all of you guys. So I just want to say that it's kind of like a weird Thanksgiving thing. So, um, my wife said this just in my wife is going to start a podcast too. So, uh, you have that to look forward to. I asked her if she was going to record one with me and she said, no, she wants her own. Or she said, I can be on her podcast. I can be a guest on her podcast. So you have that to look forward to. Um, okay. So, so some quick updates about the show. Uh, you know, in the beginning I was just grabbing random people that I thought would be interesting, uh, to be on the show. And, you know, I'm definitely, I've definitely found that the curating of guests is difficult, but it's also an art form that it's also a, a craft. The, the guests that come on is a craft in and of itself. I, I think, I think our smart listeners, you guys will, um, maybe over time, I'm hoping that as in the aggregate, if you, if you look at all of the guests, you'll start picking up on kind of what it, like the, the theme or the attitude of the show will take form. That's what I'm hoping. And curating guests is really, you know, anyways, it's an art form. Um, why did we start the show? We started the show. Uh, because I enjoy doing this. I've been I've been making stuff for the internet for a long time, since 2011 probably. And you know, most of it no one ever saw. But I really enjoy it. And I at some point I tried starting a lot, you know, a bunch of different podcasts and I just thought uh instead of trying to figure out what the thing is going to be or what the market is or what the message is or anything like that, I just picked the most vague name because I said, what what is the most vague name that I knew? It was like picking a tattoo. Like, what is the most vague thing that I know I will not be mad at myself for 20 years from now? Because I really want to, I know that this will be my space to have interviews and conversations and make some audio and video podcasts. For those of you who don't know, you can watch the podcast on YouTube now. So as this started out with just like Skype calls, then it turned into in person with some interesting guests. And then we added the video so you can watch the podcast uh, on YouTube and on Facebook. I uploaded on my page there. I also really, I I listen to a ton of podcasts, really long podcasts, Roderick on the line, uh, the Joe Rogan experience. It all, it all started out with radio lab. I love radio lab and that got me into everything, you know, and I really do believe that um, podcasts are unique because you can have a long form conversation. And, and what I mean is like longer than five minute sound bites on Fox news. And people have been talking about this uh, really interesting episode, Joe Rogan and Eric Weinstein, you know, talked alluded a little bit to this and, um, Eric Weinstein, who's ta- mentioned a little bit this idea of the dark web that there's that there's another current of media, quote unquote, this like alternative media that people are people are listening to. I mean, Joe Rogan's four hour long episodes just talking to a physicist or a nutritionist or a science, you know, whatever. Um, people tune in. Millions of people are listening to these four hour podcasts. Or Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson having long, long debates or Ezra Klein and Sam, Sam Harris having these long conversations. And I think they're really they're I think they're important and I enjoy them and I gain a lot from them. So anyways, I, you know, I know some people think it's not cool to talk about the show on the show. 
Uh, but that's why that's why we started the the show. And as I've talked about a lot, there's this tension uh, about who, who, like, who's the audience, or what are we trying to say, or like, who's this for? Is it for Catholic? Like, I'm Catholic. That's my unique, I guess, perspective. Is you know, I'm Catholic and all the other parts of me, but that's one of the most you know distinguished or distinguishable things about me. Anyways, um. And I, I, I always have that tension between like, is this a Catholic podcast or I want to have other people on that aren't Catholic and I want to have conversations. And part of the biggest reason that I wanted to start this podcast is because as I listen to all of these podcasts, I would have loved, especially when I was younger, but I would have loved to listen to someone a little bit closer to my perspective, like either someone who's Christian, not to say that all the podcasts I listen to, like no one's Christian. There aren't Christian podcasts, but I don't know. Just someone with, (coughs) excuse me, someone, someone with my, I'm creating the content that I would have liked to listen to. And that's all I really care about. I'm creating the stuff that I would have loved to listen to. And maybe along the way, maybe over the next five, 10, 20 years, um, at the very least, my grandkids, hi grandkids, uh, my grandkids and my kids will have this curated library of conversations. Um, so who knows what's that, what, what that's going to look like 10 years from now, 20 years from now, who knows what Alexa will be able to do with these conversations. I'll probably be able to be recreated as some type of artificial robot in the future. Uh, so you have that to look forward to. So not exactly sure what this show is, but you know, we're kind of moving in a direction. And I think you'll notice that there, there are these podcast episodes where are definitely in person. I love that. We have some, uh, over Skype and then we have some, uh, where Allie, Johnny and Nick are going to come on some fellow friends and Catholic creatives. And so some updates on the podcast, right? So there's going to be video every time, uh, as far as I can make that happen and the idea is that because we put out a show every monday and the idea is uh i know i'm late this time but we're gonna put out three episodes with interviews and once a month we're gonna commit hopefully to a live like you could call in but like a live show once a month with the whole gang the whole ali johnny nick and me and that episode will be a little more structured there'll be some segments to some fun segments in there. We'll do some news and noteworthy. We'll do some updates and stuff like that. We'll, we'll listen to voicemails and stuff. That'll be the really kind of crazy, wild, consistent episode. The other three episodes every month will be with, uh, you know, those curated guest lists. I have some really interesting, man, there's one I'm reading this book, um, uh, supernatural. Oh man, where is it? Anyways, Matthew Rossano, who I want to have on, uh, a psychologist and talking about, how religion evolved and just uh, a few other, I don't know. I probably shouldn't talk about guest lists, but, um, but here's something for you that gives like when, whenever I'm doing this type of stuff or I'm making stuff online, this might be a quote you've already heard, but I want to play something for you. This is a, a quote by Ira glass. And there's a really wonderful video, uh, talking about the creative process. And I feel like I'm in the throes of this with this show. And I don't know. I just wanted to play this for you because over the last eight years, this quote, like this snippet of an interview, Ira Glass, um, who uh, did This American Life and, oh, wait, 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 am I getting that confused? Yeah, yeah, This American Life. Or is that, I get Ira Glass and Alex Bloomberg confused for some reason. And I really wish somebody had told this to me is that um, all of us who do creative work, like, you know, we get into it. And we get into it because we have good taste. But it's like there's a gap. That for the first couple years that you're making stuff, what you're making isn't so good, okay? It's not that great. It's it's, it's trying to be good. It has ambition to be good, but it's not quite that good. But your taste, the thing that got you into the game, your, your taste is still killer. And your taste is good enough that you can tell that what you're making is kind of a disappointment to you. You know what I mean? A lot of people never get past that phase. A lot of people at that point, they quit. And the thing I would just like say to you with all my heart is that m- most everybody I know who does interesting creative work, they went through a phase of years 
where they had really good taste, they could tell what they were making wasn't as good as they wanted it to be. They knew it felt short. It didn't have this special thing that we wanted it to have. And the thing I would say to you is, everybody goes through that. And for you to go through it, if you're going through it right now, if you're just getting out of that phase, you got to know it's totally normal. And the most important possible thing you could do is do a lot of work. Do a huge volume of work. Put yourself on a deadline so that every week or every month you know you're going to finish one story. Because it's only by actually going through a volume of work that you're actually going to ca catch up and close that gap. And your, the work you're making will be as good as your ambitions. It takes a while. It's going to take you a while. It's normal to take a while. And you just have to fight your way through that. Okay? I love that. I love that quote, or I love that, that snippet is from an old interview. And uh, the video, which is amazing, is uh, Daniel Sachs. And I'll, I'll link up to that video. And uh, he does a really good job of, of making that visual. But I love that idea that, uh, you know, like having faith in your taste, that your taste is what got you into the game, into the creative process. And you just have to trust your taste, especially when you're trying to make stuff that doesn't match up with your with your taste the taste your taste is still killer you you know what's good and what's not and and you're trying to make things and you're like frustrated that it's not living up to this ideal you have in your head this this um the taste the taste that you have anyways i really like that and i feel like that's kind of where we are with the podcast and maybe that encourages you a little bit if there's creative things you want to do in your life or things you want to make or things you want to um <clears throat> go after there's also this uh article i don't know how true this is but it, apparently there was some study where they took a bunch of people and i mean stop me if you've heard this before but they took a bunch of people and uh they told one group the goal is to make one perfect pot um and so they told this group that didn't know how to do pottery make one perfect pot they told the other group make as many pots as possible. And both of these groups of people had no experience with pottery or making pots. Turns out the one group that was trying to make the perfect pot, they took way too long trying to figure out what would constitute the perfect pot. How would they do it? Meanwhile, the other group that wasn't caring about making the perfect pot just was trying to make as many as possible. They, through the process, were, were gaining expertise, were, ga were gaining knowledge and experience just by trying to churn out as many as possible. So I love that idea that Iris says about put yourself on a, on a timeline or on a schedule, on a deadline, and just do it. Just put in the work. Um, so here's to making pots. Uh, so yeah, I already told you guys, we're going to have the new episode every Monday. Another big part of, um, what I'm doing this whole, you know, making content is the YouTube channel, I'm making videos. I'm trying to commit to making one video, uh, one video a week. Um, so I have on my website, it's like Mondays is the podcast and Tuesdays is the YouTube video, but I think it's going to be more like Mondays is the podcast and then Wednesdays is the YouTube video coming out. So anyways, it's not supposed to be a long, it's not supposed to be a long podcast, but let's see here. We got a few voicemails. You can call in and donate a voicemail to this wonderful show. 817-527-1423. I try not to even really listen to the voicemails until we start recording the podcast. Uh, and maybe probably from now on, any voicemails will just be on that once a month show. We'll just go to our voicemails. Um, so uh, let's just do them in order here, and hopefully you can hear this all right. Hey, Edmund, Stephen Caruso here, first-time listener to the show, and absolutely loved it. Just heard episode 29 where you and your wife hopped on to the live stream. Mm. It worked really, really well. Um, loved all the topics on my morning canoe, from Catholic creatives to autophagy. We're totally on the same wavelength, and I think we share a lot of the same weird and eclectic biohacking interests. So, mm. Love the show. Thanks a lot. Keep it coming. My question is, have you tried Bulletproof Coffee as part of your fasting regimen? Hope to hear from you. Bye. Oh, that was wonderful. That was a wonderful voicemail from Stephen Caruso. Um, thanks so much for... Uh, hey, Danielle, did you hear that? He Well, you didn't because I have headphones on. Uh, he really liked... Uh, he just listened to episode 29 and really liked uh, you and I's different things we talked about catholic creatives to autophagy and fasting 
And he asks about, have you ever tried bulletproof coffee? And so I have actually tried bulletproof coffee. Uh, I got really into it a few years ago. And for those of you who don't know, you can look this up. There's some guy, I think Dave Asprey is the guy that came up with it. But bulletproof coffee is the idea is putting, I think, grass fed butter, so some type of fat, and then uh, some type of M- MCT oil or some type of, um, yeah, MCT oil or like coconut oil or something like that, and blending those two things in coffee. Maybe it's either grass fed butter or the MCT oil. I forget what it is. But the idea is you're putting um, a type of fat in the coffee and the theory is that it has some type of synergistic effect. That's really good um, for your brain. It's really good for getting you hyped up. Um, Actually, could you go get that bottle of MCT oil for me? I actually just recently, so I have tried a bulletproof coffee. I didn't find that there was that big of an effect other than um, I just had coconut oil everywhere. Uh, It it was kind of tasty. Um, I have recently been trying, this is MCT oil by on it, uh, because I'm a huge Joe Rogan fanboy, but I do like on it, but this is medium chain triglycerides, which is comes from uh 100% pure coconut oil. And it's just a liquid and you can take tablespoons of it, or you can put it in coffee. They have other versions of it. Um, the thing with this is that it's keto say like it's, it's, it's technically keto. So it's just like fat, um, saturated fat so i've tried it um i haven't noticed i know danielle's a little skeptical of like how i haven't noticed a difference yeah i mean i haven't i mean i don't know i mean i i am sure it helps um i wasn't that impressed by the bulletproof coffee i don't know if it was more of like a placebo effect when i tried it i mean I, i definitely felt like i don't know it was it was interesting but um so anyway, Steven, uh, that's all I got, really. I don't really have much more insightful um, opinions on that. But so glad you listened to the show, man. I do think – I think we're kind of – I think we're uh, we're on to some of the same things. I bet you listen to similar podcasts and YouTube channels and stuff. But really, really appreciate you listening to the show um, and calling in. Feel free to call in anytime. Maybe we'll have you on the show. Uh, so here's the next one. Let's see what we got here. Hi, Edmund. This is Bonnie Ingstrom. I hope you're having a great day. Um, I wanted to ask you about those dinners that you host for new parishioners. Dinners that I host for new parishioners. I don't know how this sounds to you guys. It's. I think my. I think I got some things messed up over here on my mixer. But she's asking about dinners I host for new parishioners at your parish. Um, and, and really, I'm just like amazed at all these awesome ideas that you have and the way that you're always creating. I'm not trying to suck up. I really am. I think that it must just be. Whatever, Bonnie, you're such a suck up. Um, you must have a great boss <laughs> who allows you to kind of take these, um, inspirations and just roll with them. But so I do, I do have a very, I have a very, well, my boss's management style so my pastor at my church. So I work at a church. Bonnie's, you know, talking about these different initi- initiatives we're trying. I re- just <coughs> this is my first year that I transitioned out of youth ministry and into adult ministry. So I'm coming up with different events and programs and ministries and, and classes and stuff for the adults at our parish. And Bonnie, yeah, is mentioning that. So, anyways, my my boss is my pastor, Father Flynn, and uh, his management sp- style or his whole theory is hire the best people. Give them, give them basically a very, a very, uh, a very generous budget, and then leave them alone. Now that has its pros and cons. Now on the opposite, on the opposite end of the extreme would be a micromanager. Um, so it has its it, its pros and cons, and yeah, my, I mean, I do have a great pastor who really believes in getting the right people on the bus, right? Um. Jim, whatever his name is, from good to great, right? This idea of getting the right people on the bus and uh, and then letting them do their thing. But let's let's uh, keep going. But I'm wondering, like, how do those dinners work? Um, what kind of content do you provide? And then how do you plug those people into your parish after that dinner and just kind of continue to um, foster community for them and draw them ever closer to Christ? Mm. Um, 
And then also, like, do you ever just feel like your brain is going to explode because you have so many ideas? <laughs> Um, I am not like that, so I really am wondering. <laughs> I just kind of plod along, but um, uh-huh. yeah, I am anxious to hear what you have to say. And yeah, God bless you and your family. Bye, Bonnie. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. This was one of my one of my favorite episodes. Was uh, just how natural we just hit it off on that episode. We just had so much dang fun. We were just laughing and carrying on. Um, okay, so she was saying, "How do the dinners work?" Well, first of all, yes, my head, there are multiple times that I do feel like my head is going to explode from all the ideas. I think that's because maybe, maybe I'm undiagnosed ADHD. Maybe I'm undiagnosed bipolar. Maybe, maybe I have a little bit of mania. Maybe I'm addicted to caffeine. Um, there are, I have found that as I've gotten older, uh, and probably it's probably the intense, iPhone usage. I'm not going to shy away from, you know, saying that that definitely has an effect. I have to be really careful with how much I'm on my phone and how much caffeine I'm having, how much exercise I'm doing. Exercise is really important. But yeah, no, there are times where my brain's just like going too fast for me. Can't keep up. Can't keep up with my head. Um, so she was asking about these dinners that are, uh, we call them our start here dinners. They used to be so really in all of any of my ideas always are, you know, taking, and there's been books written on this, but like taking, taking a bunch of different things, just trying to mash them together. And so we had this idea of a newcomer or there was this idea of a newcomer dinner that had been going on for a long time at our parish, newcomer dinners where someone who's new to the parish, we'd have this dinner hosted for them. So that had been going on for a long time. But what I was interested in trying to do at our parish is instituting what we would call like a clear path of discipleship. So just trying to outline or, or give, um, I mean, in sale and we're back. We had some technical difficulties. This is going to be a pain to edit. I told myself, this is only gonna be a five minute episode and look what happens. It's all your fault. These start here dinners. We, um, Start here dinners. We uh, so, anyways, at the parish they were already doing these newcomer dinners. We were trying to put in place clear path of discipleship, which is basically uh, trying to organize all the things that our church does. Our church does a million things, and it's hard for people to have context, especially people that aren't super into church, to have context about where they should start. Like, where do you start first? Do you join the Knights of Columbus? If you're if you're just new to church, should the first thing you go do be, uh, you know, to be an usher is that, should that be the first thing you do? Should you, should you go to the, you know, should you just join a Bible study? Uh, should you go anyways? So the idea was to communicate a clear path of discipleship. Uh, you know, we articulated ours encounter, grow, serve, um, as a way to help give people kind of a roadmap, like here are the three kind of phases of, you know, your spiritual journey and give them some context and kind of some different classes and stuff. So anyways, at these um, newcomer dinners, we have a newcomer team ministry team that hosts, you know, put, you know, serves all the food. Um, We provide childcare. Everyone shows up. We have everyone go around and introduce themselves on a mic. Um, We have our pastor kind of give a little bit of the history of the church and a little bit of his vocation story and then um, I get up and I just, you know, I razz them and I, I don't know. I'm getting tired at this point. Um, I get up and present a little bit about that clear path of discipleship and help, you know, give them uh, some tips on getting plugged into the parish, the church and where to start. So that's kind of what happens at the start here dinner. And yeah, we're still working on it. I mean, we're still trying to figure it out. Um, we do like a little, I, I tried doing this little thing like ask father Flynn. Have you ever wanted to ask father a question, uh, during church, but couldn't. Um, so that's kind of what's at the dinner. So anyways, Bonnie, thanks for the voicemail. Thanks for donating a voicemail. You're the best. Uh, okay. So here we go. We're going to go real quick to the next one. Hopefully this works. Hello. Why do people get so angry at dumb internet jokes? 
I was talking to somebody recently about how angry Catholics get over Christian themed memes posted online. For example, what I'm talking about, uh, just browse the comment section of a, the, the Babylon B post. Mm. This isn't a time to preach, people. It's a time to laugh. I don't get it. That was great. That was Ian. Ian Cabrera. Ian Cabrera. I think I think it's Cabrera. I think it, it might be something different. But Ian, Ian, who we've joked. I don't know if he listens to the show, but we've joked about him being the editor, and he's not really, but kind of. He's helped make some little micro pieces of content for you Gary V listeners out there. Oh, <laughs> Ian's in the live uh, Instagram and he said, please stop. I'm so sorry, man. That was awful. I thought the internet wasn't working well enough on the uh, phone for you to see that. Why do people get so angry at the internet jokes, man? I don't know. I'm right there with you, man. I am right there with you. People take things too seriously. And those are the people you, you have to be, you have to be, wary of cautious of people that don't have mirth mirth in cabrera uh they don't have a lightheartedness it doesn't mean to never be serious but i don't know man i just don't take those people seriously if they're too serious you can't take them seriously so um yeah like I try to stay away from the comment sections of a lot of things, and I really try to limit my Twitter intake Um, because it just, yeah, um, people can't take jokes. They can't take memes. The number of people that are probably, the number of people, the number of people who think that Babylon, the Babylon Bee and uh, Eye of the Tiber are actual news sites are the same people that are friends with people that think the onion sometimes has true articles on it. Um, so I don't know, man, (laughs) if we had more time, my memory cards full, but if we had more time, I would definitely look up some memes. I'm sorry, Ian, Ian, Cabrera. I know that because I'm cultured. I know how to say that. Okay, here we go. Next one. Okay, so here's my question. Why do Protestants think that divorce is not as big of a deal as Catholics do when Luke chapter 16 verse 18 clearly says it is? And this verse says, everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And the one who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. Mm. That is a good question. Um, Question is, why do Protestants think divorce is not a big deal, not as big of a deal as Catholics, when in Luke it's a, you know, Jesus says, if you divorce someone, you commit adultery and marry someone else, you commit adultery. Um, I just want to make a quick little, like a quick little, like, like a quick little, like parentheses. Let's say something. I need to stop looking over there. It's parentheses. Let's say something. And then the parentheses. Um, I think it might be a little bit of an overgeneralization to say that all Protestants feel this way. This is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. I know I do it too. We all, you know, as Catholics, sometimes we do this because I don't, I don't know why. It's just a thing we do. Um, but to say Protestants feel this way, that's a very big umbrella. I mean, you have everything from Unitarian, Anglican, you know, Anglican High Church, Episcopalian, Methodist, Lutheran, um, Presbyterian. Did I say that one? House church, emergent church, uh, you know, all, you know, non-denominational, interdenominational, I think is one too. So there, there are a plethora of beliefs when it comes to some of these things. When it comes to applying the gospel, 
you know, just to our everyday life. Um, it's pretty easy to find the Catholic teaching on divorce. Um, you know, it's pretty easy to find that. I think like, I mean, it's probably, I mean, I probably shouldn't just like explain it, but the Catholic understanding is that, you know, yeah, the divorce is not an option. Basically divorce is not a thing. And, and in the Catholic church, when someone quote unquote gets a divorce in the Catholic church, what they do is they investigate whether or not there are grounds for it not being a valid marriage. So there are some situations where, um, let's say you marry someone and then you find out that they're, then, then much later you find out like they're an alcoholic and, and you know, they're abusive and these types of things. Like, um, there might be grounds to say that that marriage wasn't valid. So in the Catholic church, sometimes people will get confused divorce and annulment. And an annulment is when um, you're basically saying that the ma- that the marriage, in fact, did not happen; that it wasn't valid because there was a lack of information. There was a lack of well, not information. There was like like if like if your spouse withheld a very serious like I am an alcoholic and this is going to s- gravely affect our relationship, or if or if you are forced under stress, or or if you're too young to have gotten married and you can prove like you didn't actually understand what you were getting into, the vows that you were making. So anyways, uh, I'm not sure why some Protestants, I mean, I'm not sure why there, I mean, it's conceivable that there are some Protestants that think divorce is not a big deal. Um, but I will say this, like now having been married, married, um, yeah, if someone yeah, someone says in the in the chat here if someone didn't want mar- never wants kids or these are called impediments to marriage. Um it, yeah, there, there's you can look it up the impediments to marriage in the Catholic Church. Um now I will say this. Before I'd been married for a long period of time, uh I was much quicker to judge. I was much quicker to just say you know, you should never get divorced. This is never, this is never something that should ever happen. And I, you know, divorce, I think is not an option. Uh, an annulment might be something that's legitimate. There might be legitimate reasons for that, but I just want to say this on this topic. Marriage is really, really, it can be really (laughs) difficult. And, I have much more empathy for the for the deep level of emotional trauma and borderline torture that that being miserable for a long period of time uh could like what that could do to someone and I'm not saying that divorce you know, is an option or, or, you know, divorce. I mean, I mean, I think most people would say that it just kind of sucks when parents split up like it, like there's no way around that. I don't think, I mean, feel free to call in and, and, you know, if you have a different experience, but divorce is hard, especially on the kids and, uh, it can be very difficult. So I just want to add that because from my own experience, marriage can be really, really difficult. And there was a point in our marriage where things were difficult. And I, and I thought to myself, if this continued to go on for, let's just say five years, or if this just kept going on for even another year or another two years, or, um, you know, I, I, I reached this point where I was like, man, I don't know. I, I, I told, I don't know what I would do. What, um, what kind of like low I might be tempted to sink to. And tempted, right? Like, like I'm not saying that people can't, you know, endure lots of suffering and 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 be faithful and and you know, through, you know, their relationship with Jesus. And I don't, I don't know. I'm, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but I guess what I'm saying is, um, I have a deeper sense of empathy for that type of 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 pain, especially. You know, I'm very lucky. Like my wife and I, we can talk about these things. And even though we were going through some difficulties, like we could talk about it. And I can't imagine relationships where maybe there's something more serious that's causing stress on the relationship or the marriage. And and if it and if they couldn't talk about it, or they couldn't talk about it 
fruitfully in any way or constructively. And it just carried on for two years and three years. And then kids are, kids are involved. And then you feel horrible that you're in this horrible situation and, and dragging the kids through it. And, um, so anyways, just that to say that, like, um, I think these situations are so touchy and we have to be really empathetic. Uh, that doesn't mean that we, that we, uh, sugarcoat things or don't speak the truth. Um, but sometimes when someone is hurting that bad, it's really hard, especially if they, if they don't necessarily, they might not necessarily have a strong relationship with God or with Jesus. Um, it can be really difficult to tell someone who's hurting that bad, uh, that they just need to stay there. And there are situations where, uh, you know, like in the Catholic church, you might say, um, you know, there might be, it might be prudent to get separated, like to live apart, but, um, but not to remarry because, you know, what, what Jesus teaches is that, um, when the two become one, I mean, they're one flesh. I mean, when, when, if a marriage is valid, then, then they're, they're one flesh till death do us part. You kind of say that till death do us part. Um, Anyways, that's just some thoughts. That's just some late night, you know, Thanksgiving thoughts. Some really happy, just make you feel good kind of thoughts to just end this episode on a on a positive note. But thank you for I do actually I do I do um appreciate this type of question coming in and that voicemail, whoever that was that submitted that. I think that's good. I like I like this. I like getting these uh kind of challenging questions getting some fun in there, but also talking about real issues. And, and if you're listening to this right now, feel free to call in. If you want to leave a voicemail and talk about this or, talk, you know, share your experience, maybe, maybe you just feel alone. Um, and you want to share something anonymously, or you want to just share your experience of it. I'd love to to have that conversation with you. So thanks everyone. This has been the show with Edmund today, just with Edmund. Um, again, you know, just some last minute, you know, admin stuff here. You can call in and leave a voicemail at 817-527-1423. You can watch the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash Evan Mitchell. You can go to the links in the show notes. Uh, the website for the show is the show.fireside.fm. Uh, I got some YouTube videos coming out every Wednesday, hopefully. And, uh, one you should check out is a review. We did me and my wife of the new every sacred Sunday mass, uh, journal, uh, I also did another one on on um, some everyday carry Bibles. Uh, anyways, on YouTube, I read and respond to every single comment while supplies last. While I'm, you know, not getting thousands of comments. Hopefully that never happens. But, I mean, I'm fine if that happens. But it, you know what I mean. I'm extremely active on Instagram. If you're not every day watching my Instagram stories, where's my phone? Oh, there it is. I'm, man, I am... I have so much fun in those Instagram stories. So anyways, thank you everyone. If you're, li- if you listen to this, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Hope you had a good holiday. It's going to be a good December. We're going to Penny and Sparrow is having a Christmas extravaganza at the Granada theater in Dallas on December. What? 11th, 7th, December 7th. If you're going to be there and you're listening to this, like you should definitely come find me. And my wife and all the friends that we're bringing. Or if you're in the Dallas area listening to this, like, let's go to the Granada Theater December 7th. Anyways, that's the show. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for coming along on this journey. You know what this is. What it will be. But you matter. That's it. That's all I got. Talk to you later. Bye.